grace is a weapon that will overcome. I'm gonna shout like the battles won. Hello and welcome to Victory Church Online. We're so glad that you could join us today. In today's service, we will be taking communion. Feel free to pause here to prepare some elements by grabbing a drink and some bread. During this time, as we meet online, we encourage you to stay connected on all our social media platforms. We so appreciate your giving during this time, Church. If you want to continue to do so, you can through an online bank transfer or through the Tithely app. Would you now join us as our team leads us in worship, followed by communion and a message.
So I'm a really, really forgetful person. If you live with me for, in, for two minutes, you'll know how forgetful I am. My kids have lost count of the number of times they've had to find my keys, my reading glasses, my handbag. I'll be running out the door and realize I haven't got something with me, with me and it'll often take five minutes to find it. And you'd think I'd have a system. I do have a system, but I tend to forget what the system is on a daily basis. If I go to the shops, I'm the one who comes home with lots of things except the things I went there for. Even if I had a list, I would probably lose the list or forget where the list is. I'll often save a list on my phone, but forget where I've saved it. Um, Steve often rolls his eyes at me for my forgetfulness. I tend to remember things that are not important and forget things that are important. So often if Steve is talking to me, he's full of knowledge and he'll often randomly give me information that has no relevance to my life and I get a little bit freaked out because I'm really worried that in a moment of crisis the thing that I remember is not necessarily what I should remember it'll be that random little bit of information Steve told me about random facts in history and it can frustrate me so if I'm prone to forget there are some things that I do to help me remember and I love that God knows how prone we are to forget. Some of you are amazing at remembering things, but you don't always remember the things you should. And God knows what we're prone to. And so in, all throughout history, he set things in, in place for the people of Israel to remember, to remember the important things. So there are festivals that the Israelites would celebrate. There were special days that the Israelites, and they were all written down and passed on from generation to generation to generation to help them remember. One of those things was the Passover. The Passover was a, time, a day set aside for all of Israel to have a meal together as a family to remember what happened in the time of the Exodus. They would have all these different things in their meal and throughout the meal, it was the children who would tell the adults what those things meant. And hopefully the adults have told them the things that are important so that they can recite back and remember this story. And so when the, those children grow up, they teach their children what those things mean and then those children recite back to the adults. So on this particular day, it's the day that Jesus is about to die. They're having this Passover meal. All the disciples are gathered together as they have every year to remember the Passover. And in this moment as, as Jesus is picking up his glass to have a drink, he does this significant thing. Instead of talking about the Exodus, which is what they do, Jesus actually lifts up his glass and his bread and he says this, do this in remembrance of me. So these people who've been doing this ritual year in, year out, year in, year out, are being told by their leader, don't forget that, but from now on, things are going to change. I want you to remember when you pick up this glass and break this bread, that everything that was significant about that exodus points to me. Now I can imagine the disciples having really no idea what he's talking about. They haven't seen him die. They haven't seen him rise. They've just heard these words, remember me when you do this. But I can imagine the very first communion after that experience, after Jesus had died, remember this is the night that he was betrayed and then went into the weekend of his death and resurrection is when he picked up that glass and said, hey, when you do this and when you break bread together, remember me. I can imagine at that very first time that they meet together and not just at Passover, but the next time they gather and have a meal together and someone picks up their glass, those words would have resonated in their heart. Hey, remember me. And straight away, something about Jesus would come to their memory. Now, all of them may have had something different. And I can imagine when, they're, when Jesus is gone and they're tarrying in that room, the upper room just before the Holy Spirit comes and they're having a meal together and they're waiting as someone picks up their glass and as someone else offers some bread, I can imagine them beginning to talk about Jesus because Jesus said, hey, do this in remembrance of me. So someone pipes up and says, oh, remember when he talked about, um, the, the, remember that time that when, we, when there were 5,000 people and there was no food and he broke bread and he, and he, he actually multiplied it to 5,000 people, but we had leftovers. Remember that time where we had very little and Jesus did a miracle? Remember? And I can imagine someone else saying, yeah, remember when that blind man was healed? And, and someone else says, remember when he was on the cross and he looked down at his mother and he, he was bleeding? I wonder what it is Jesus is asking you to remember. I, I have, I'm prone to forgetfulness. 
And if you're anything like me, in a season that we're in, it's really easy to forget, to forget the right things. We remember all the stuff that we shouldn't, but we can forget what we should. And this morning, just as we're lifting up this cup intentionally and remembering, I want you to take your bread and break it. And I actually want you to hit the pause button. And if you've got someone with you, so maybe your kids, maybe your husband is sitting on the couch next to you or your wife, I want you to do something. I want you to share with one another what it is you feel God wants you to remember about Jesus. He said, hey, this is like the blood. You know that blood that was shed so that the angel of death as he passed by their homes wouldn't pass by their homes? That blood was shed for you. So when the angel and the shadow of that angel of death comes past and there's a shadow of this virus going across the earth right now, we can take communion and know that that blood was shed for the protection of our homes. And I believe there's power in taking communion today because Jesus said, do it in remembrance of me. I, that, that lamb that was sacrificed was pointing to me. I'm now that lamb that was sacrificed. That blood was shed to give you protection, to give you healing. It says in Isaiah, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. What is it God wants you to remember? As you lift up a glass, I want you to gather as a family. Maybe you're just sitting in bed on your own. He wants you to remember something. Maybe just pause, pull out your journal and write some things he wants you to remember in this season. He says, remember me because we're prone to forget. We're prone to forget in the midst of chaos and sickness and isolation, that he is present, that he is good, that he's faithful, that he has, he, he's in control. I wonder this morning if you need to remember that his body was broken so that your body didn't need to be broken, that your body didn't need to be sick, that your body didn't need to be hurting. His blood was shared for forgiveness of sins. Maybe you're feeling the weight of sin, but his forgiveness is available and maybe you've forgotten. The way you spoke to your kids yesterday is weighing heavy on your heart. And yet his blood was shed to remind us that forgiveness is available. I wonder this morning if you're just feeling very weighted by what's going on in the world. Or maybe you're just nonchalant. And he's saying, hey, I want you to remember there's a seriousness about what we're doing today. Take it seriously. Don't forget. This is really, really important. Every time you have a meal this week, I wonder if someone around your table can lift up the cup and say, hey, Jesus told us to remember him every time. As often as we gather together, and right now, all across Bendigo, there are people gathered together, not necessarily in the same place at the same time, but together as his body. We remember him. We remember what we have in common. We remember what we share. We remember what, what, what we live for and what our purpose is. Have you forgotten? I wonder today if he wants to remind you, why don't you just stop? pause and remember together. Hey church, so glad you could join us today. You know, our prayer for you, no matter where you are right now, you might be in bed, you might be on the couch, you might even be in the kitchen cooking some food. Our prayer is that today God speaks to you, he speaks to your heart, no matter what you're doing. Hey, uh, before I give a short talk today, I just personally want to say how much I miss meeting as a church. You know, I miss coming to um, church on a Sunday, shaking the hand of the First Impressions team. I miss my annual Sunday hugs from people like Glenda, Anne and Trish. And I miss having laughs with all the youth and young adults before and after the service. And I know that many of you guys would be exactly the same as me. Can I just encourage you? As Pastor Steve said uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, isolate physically, but don't isolate spiritually or relationally. Stay connected to people. You know, we might not be able to meet face to face, but we can still be phone call to phone call, FaceTime to FaceTime, text message to text message. Stay connected to people. Uh, don't isolate relationally and don't isolate 
spiritually. Hey, maybe you're watching this and you've never met me before. My name's Andy, and it's my honor just to give a short message today uh, to you through this screen. You know, I think it's cool that we uh, live in this day and age where we can do this. We can still meet as the church because the church is not a building. The church is you and I. Hey, I want to talk today on the thought, and you can write this down. I hope you've got a notepad or your phone with you. Um, write this down. Quarantined with Jesus. Quarantined with Jesus. If you have your Bible, I'm reading from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 22. John chapter 20, verses 19 to 22. And it reads like this. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors before, because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them his wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. Be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. I also just want to read a uh, parallel text to today's main text uh, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. And it reads like this It says, Look, the virgin will conceive a child, speaking of Jesus. Uh, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. You know, I had an incredible childhood growing up. I've got some of the best parents, uh, the best parents in my eyes, and uh, uh, they are such a blessing to me. But in saying that, I don't think I always made it easy for them. You, you know what I mean? Uh, us as kids growing up, we don't make it easy for our parents. So I remember going through a phase, maybe your kids are going through this phase as well, where I just didn't want to eat my vegetables. I just did not want to eat the veggies. And so instead of sending, to me, sending me to my room where I had toys and things to play with, my parents would send me to the laundry. I mean, what a bad place to be. Uh, why they send me to the laundry? Well, there's nothing to do in there. I wasn't going to do the laundry, the washing for my mum. So I had two choices. I either sat there uh, on my own, isolated, doing nothing for hours, or I ate my vegetables. And in that case, I was allowed to come back out and play with my toys once again. You know, we're living in unprecedented times right now. This has never really happened to many of us, especially this isolation thing. It can be scary at times. And uh, to me, it feels like, uh, laundry hangouts back when I was a child you know I was isolated and alone in that space and except even today I keep eating my vegetables and yet nothing is changing nothing's changing around me you know isolation can be lonely uh, it can be boring you know, isolation isn't fun you know our text today in John chapter 20 we find the disciples in a bit of a similar situation we find them in a room which they had locked themselves into this room they put themselves into this isolation in fear that the Jewish leaders were going to find them this is after the resurrection of Jesus they put themselves in isolation they were literally locked in maybe you're feeling a bit locked in right now I know I am I'm a 90% extrovert, I don't know about you guys, but I'm 90% extrovert, which means self-isolation is like living hell to me. Uh, my wife, on the other hand, she is 50-50 uh, introvert and extrovert, so she's actually really enjoying this time that we're in. Uh, I can't say the same for myself, uh, but I don't know what personality type that you are. I don't know how you're going right now, but uh, there's the potential that at some point you're going to feel locked up. You're going to feel like the disciples locked in your house, feel isolated. You're going to feel quarantined. I just want to remind you today, a really simple reminder, that you're not quarantined alone. You're actually quarantined with Jesus. You are quarantined with Jesus. You know, our second reference text today was Matthew chapter 1. And we have uh, Matthew quoting the prophet Isaiah. And he quotes him saying there's going to be a child, which is talking about Jesus, called Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Emmanuel speaks of the fact that Jesus came down to earth like you and me. And even after his death, burial and resurrection, in which Jesus conquered death and sin, uh, he made a way for us to have a relationship with the Father again. Jesus is still today Emmanuel, God with us. You know, he is with you. Uh, you might feel a bit locked in today. You might feel a bit alone and isolated, maybe frustrated, maybe annoyed at your kids or annoyed at your husband because it's all you guys are just together all the time. You know, you are not alone. You're not quarantined on your own. You're quarantined with Jesus. And so here we find the disciples in a similar situation to you and I, locked in a room, afraid and isolated. I want to use our text just quickly today to give you three things three things in which you have access to while being quarantined with Jesus. Three things that you have access to while being quarantined with Jesus. Would you write this down? The first one is this. You have access to peace. You have access 
to peace. You know, our text today says, Suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. And these are his first words. Peace be with you. Being quarantined with Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, means that we have access to peace. Or how? Because Jesus is our peace. I love this text that we're reading today, right? Because let me ask you a quick question. What changed about the room that would bring peace? Uh, were they transported to like a sunny, uh, meadowy scenario where they were not in a room anymore? Well, no. Uh, were, they, uh, were the doors unlocked in that moment? No. Did they suddenly have a meal that they were eating and they felt at peace when they were eating the meal? The text doesn't say that. The thing that changed in the text was that Jesus entered the room. Jesus entered the room. You know, maybe you're feeling a bit of anxiety about all that's going on right now. Anxiety over money, um, jobs, anxiety over having kids around so much. Can I tell you that in that place, you actually have access to peace because peace is not a feeling. Peace is a person and his name is Jesus. Peace is not feeling. Peace is a person and his name is Jesus. You are quarantined, which means you are quarantined with Jesus, meaning you have access to peace. You know, number two is joy. You have access to joy. Uh, in verse 20 of our text today, it says, As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and in his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. You know, uh, us as believers of Christ, we know the end of the story. Jesus wins. The Bible says the devil is under our foot. You know, this, this sick cousin of the devil, COVID-19, is actually also under our foot. And Jesus here to the disciples shows them his hands shows them his side where the scars are, uh, not as a memory of, of pain, not as a moment of fear, but, but as, as proof of victory. He shows them this as proof of victory. See, once seeing the victory, the disciples were then full of joy. I want to encourage you today, if you're feeling anxious, uh, if you're feeling scared, uh, whenever you feel lonely and isolated, remind yourself that we have the victory in Jesus. Jesus has the victory. We know the end of the story. You have access to joy. The cool thing about joy is this, that happiness is actually circumstantial. Happiness we find in different situations and circumstances. Joy though, uh, joy is transcendent. It's superior to happiness. Our joy must be hinged as believers on Jesus, in Jesus and in the cross, in the victory that he brought for us. The final thing, number three, that we find when we're being quarantined with Jesus is this. Number three, the Holy Spirit. Our text says this, Jesus says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. You know, up until this point, the disciples had never actually experienced the Holy Spirit living in them. The Holy Spirit had been with them, uh, but not in them or yet upon them. We know in Acts chapter 2, Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes upon their life. Uh, here we find Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, having defeated sin and death, breathing the Holy Spirit over the disciples, into the disciples. Now, why is this important? This is important because Jesus said in, the, in a few chapters before our text today, in John 16, he says that it's important that he should go so that he can send the Holy Spirit. Uh, you see, Jesus, this is really important for us, church. In Jesus, in coming down from heaven, taking on flesh, was 100% man and 100% God at the same time. Now, because of this, Jesus was restricted, just like you and I are, to being in one place at one time. That's why he said, it's better for me to go so I can send the Holy Spirit. Even after Jesus was resurrected, uh, now here he is, defeated sin, defeated death on the cross as a man. He came back and showed himself to the disciples, to Mary, uh, as a man. I think this is one of the most profound things in Scripture, that Jesus, Son of God, came down from heaven, took on flesh, took on humanity, just like you and I, uh, faced every temptation that we face. This blows my mind. I'm so thankful, church, for a God that understands what I'm going through, that understands how uh, the, the, the tendencies as human beings we have to worry and have anxieties. I'm so thankful for a God that gets it. You know, why did Jesus say it was better for him to go? He said that he would send the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, who's not confined to a fleshly body, but instead can be in many places at all times. You know, Holy Spirit is described by Jesus as our comforter, our advocate and our helper. I uh, hope that you would agree today that we need help through this season. Uh, you and I need help 
in this season. If, if for nothing else, we need help to stop you know, yelling at our husband on a day-to-day -day basis. If nothing else, we need help to stop screaming at the kids because they've been a bit ratty. If, if nothing else, we need help not eating too much because all the gyms just closed and I'm personally freaking out. You know, we, we need help in this season. We need the Holy Spirit. I'll say this also, church. We are, we're still on mission. You know, Jesus says to his disciples, I am sending you. People still need to hear about the gospel, even in this season that we're in. People need to still hear about the goodness of Jesus, even while we are isolated and quarantined. We need the Holy Spirit to help us shine brightly, to reveal Jesus, even in our, um, in our season. We need to show Jesus in our proximity that we have in, through social media, through phone calls, through the way we live our life. When we go shopping in Woolworths to get some bread, we need to reveal Jesus. Victory Church, I, I encourage you today, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, to give you wisdom through this season. You know, Holy Spirit is the comforter. He is the helper. And I believe that if we rely on him wholeheartedly in the Holy Spirit, we rely on him. He will work in us and through us, even in this tricky season. You know, I hope that you're encouraged by this message today. I hope that you got something out of it. I remember being quarantined with Jesus. You have access to three things. You have access to peace to joy and the Holy Spirit. Hey, let me just pray for you guys. Father, thank you so much for, for Jesus, for Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, I ask uh, even through this camera screen right now, Lord, that your peace would fall on every person watching. Lord, your joy would fill our hearts, a uh, joy that is hinged and, and founded on the victory that Jesus founded and got for us. Lord, I pray also we would look to your Holy Spirit for wisdom, for guidance, and for help through this season. Father, I thank you for every person watching this video. I pray you bless them, bless their household, bless their family. In Jesus' name, we ask, Lord, would you cement this word in our hearts? Lord, would we know that we have access to peace, joy, and the Holy Spirit at all times? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining us for Victory Church Online today. If you are impacted by the message of Jesus today or just want to talk to someone, you can contact us through the details that are on the screen now. If you're a part of our Victory Church family and you need support in any way through this season, you can also contact us through the details that are on the screen now. Thank you so much for joining us online for church today. We love you and we're praying for you and we look forward to seeing you online next week. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting.